So lots to discuss with incoming White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Hi, Jake. My pleasure. So at the first presidential debate, the candidates were asked about cyber attacks on the U.S., and this is what then-candidate, now president-elect Donald Trump, had to say about the hacking of the Democratic National Committee. Take a listen. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? You don't know who broke in to DNC. And now that President-elect Trump has been formally briefed, has he been persuaded that Russia did carry out a comprehensive cyber campaign against Hillary Clinton, and what is he prepared to do about it? Jake, if you read his entire statement that followed the briefing on Friday, he makes very clear that Russia, China, and others have attempted to attack different government institutions and businesses and individuals and organizations over a series of time. He specifically mentions the Democratic National Committee because that's why we're having this conversation. I don't want any of your viewers to be misled into thinking that somehow the Kremlin and uh, the Republican Party or the that, that, that they had the Kremlin was dealing with any of the hackers and bringing that information back to Moscow and somehow that anybody who allegedly attempted to influence our elections actually did. If you read the full report, they make very clear, Mr. Clapper and his testimony made very clear on Thursday under oath that, the, the, that any attempt, any aspiration to influence our elections failed. They were not successful in doing that and it's a very important point. We're talking about this because we had embarrassing leaks from the DNC emails. There were no fireworks in that report because there was no firewall at the DNC. Well, what they said, what the intelligence community said is that there was no evidence that Russia was able to penetrate any of the voting machines and affect the outcome that way, but they made no conclusion whatsoever. They said they didn't have any evidence and it wasn't in their charge to determine whether or not the information that was hacked by Russia uh, that was ultimately leaked to the public whether or not that changed any votes. And if you listen to what Mr. Trump had to say on the stump all the time, he invoked WikiLeaks dozens and dozens of times uh, to try to suggest that, that the WikiLeaks said that there were things that Hillary Clinton was doing or had done that were untoward. Take a listen. All you have to do is take a look at WikiLeaks and just see what they said about Bernie Sanders. WikiLeaks just actually came out. John Podesta said some horrible things about you. And boy, was he right. He said some beauties. WikiLeaks that just came out, and she lied. Now she's blaming the lie on the late, great Abraham Lincoln. So I guess what I'm confused about is, how can you say that the hacking had no impact on the election when Mr. Trump kept invoking WikiLeaks, which was printing, publishing things that the Russians had hacked? Obviously, he thought it was going to have an effect on the election. Well, having an, it had an effect on his debate answer, and it had an effect on the Clinton campaign because it was quite embarrassing to watch her closest advisors question her judgment, question whether she would ever find her voice, wondering aloud why she was testing 84 slogans to find out who she was and what she'd run on. This guy had Make America Great Again and never changed. Uh, and I know that's very embarrassing, them, them calling Chelsea Clinton, some of them, a spoiled brat. That's very uncomfortable. But that's what was hacked. The RNC... Apparently, there was an attempted hack on the RNC, I'm informed, but they had the sufficient cybersecurity firewalls in place. Jake, CNN's own reporting showed this week that the FBI asked the DNC to have access to its information, to its server, I guess, and to its information, and, and the DNC refused to turn that over to the FBI, according to CNN's own report. So all of this amounts to a very simple fact, which is that alleged attacks, alleged and aspirations to interfere with our democracy failed. And they failed, and we know that because Donald Trump won because well, of the things that had nothing attacks? to do with the hacks. And Hillary Clinton, but look, if you look at CNN's own polling data, for one year before the election, Hillary Clinton was viewed by a majority of Americans as unlikable, and she was viewed by a higher number, over 60%, as there not are, honest or trustworthy. Kellyanne, it has uh, nothing to do with Moscow. Absolutely, there are, there are dozens of reasons why Hillary Clinton is not the president-elect, and Donald Trump is. But what I guess I don't understand is why there is this reluctance by President-elect Trump and people around him to acknowledge Russia did this, 
You said it was an alleged attack. I, I don't know why you're saying alleged. Uh, no, 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 alleged, alleged to interfere with our democracy. In other words, they didn't succeed. Even if you read the New York Times, Washington Post, people are admitting, cyber experts certainly are saying, Jake, that but why uh, invoke they did all not, those WikiLeaks? If, but why invoke all those WikiLeaks that were the work of Russian intelligence, according to our intelligence agencies? Why invoke all those WikiLeaks unless he Mr. Trump? He didn't know at the time. He said he didn't know who the source was, and he's right. Look, what if it? But were, you were trying to change public Russia, impressions of Hillary Clinton, time. right? Pardon me. Mr. Trump and you and others were trying to make an argument against Hillary Clinton using the work of Russian hackers. Oh, you know what, Jake, with all due respect to Hillary Clinton, we didn't need WikiLeaks to convince the American people that they didn't like her, didn't trust her, didn't find her to be honest. Uh, she did that all on her own. She got this party started by setting up an illegal server and opening it to hacks for, for, for intelligence and security information that's much more serious than what a political party would have on sure, the server. Sure, but if, so you didn't, if you didn't need started, WikiLeaks, no, why I, keep I mentioning I just want to answer your question, too. Yeah. I want to answer your question, too. I, I, I keep hearing, particularly from my friends at CNN and other places, that we're so reluctant. We want to answer a question. Yes, we will. Read his statement. He said he sees. He knows that there have been, that Russia, China, and others are always, or have tried to attack our our governmental institutions, businesses, organizations, individuals. And let me add to that, where was the outcry when China hacked into 21 million records through our Office of Personnel and Management, OPM, of private citizens? Their personal information, 21 million, they basically got the equivalent of a slap on the wrist, just like Vladimir Putin heard from President Obama earlier this year, knock it off, when, when he thought that mm -hmm. they might be hacking into our information. Everything changed when the election result was not what they had anticipated. Uh, why, you know, if this is so important to our intelligence and our security, then why wasn't a bigger deal made about it? Why was a, a big portion of the $1.2 billion Hillary Clinton wasted on her campaign invested in this messaging? Well, I remember the OPM hack being a pretty big story on my show on CNN and others, but let me ask you something. No, no, I mean the government. I'm glad you no. covered it. I mean, why didn't we punish? Where was the punishment to, on, on that with respect to that, that then we're expelling 35 Russian operatives a week before the report is even complete, a week before Mr. Clapper even goes and testifies under oath and makes very clear that there was no impact on the election. Senator McCain has said the same thing. Again, he said, he said there was no the impact on the, on the voting process. We don't know. Right. There's no way of knowing what it affected these leaks. And if, and if you didn't need WikiLeaks, President-elect Trump sure mentioned them dozens and dozens of times. I mean, they were part of the case you were making. But let, let's move on to something but, but else. Let me just say, that's equivalent to Hillary Clinton trying to quote Republicans who uh, Republican senators and governors who weren't supporting Donald Trump. It's the equivalent. It's you're saying to your opponent, wow, you don't have support among your own group here. In the case of Secretary Clinton, she was being uh, disparaged by members of her own team in, in, through email. So that's just very different from the issue at hand. That's entirely different from what was discussed in the intelligence briefing on Friday and at the committee hearings were on you, Thursday. I were do you hope in the, you agree. Were you in the briefing on Friday? Uh, I, I was not because my top secret clearance is pending. Um, what's your understanding of how the meeting went? Obviously, there's been a lot of hostility between presidents like Trump and the intelligence community. Uh, was it a, an ugly meeting? Was it a hostile meeting from what you it understand? It was cordial. I talked to the president-elect directly about it. It was cordial. He found it to be constructive. He was very happy that the intelligence uh, community at the highest levels came to Trump Tower to brief him there. And we're really, you know, we're, the only disappointment I would express is that the briefing came after leaks to the media, after leaks to NBC at the very least, after leaks to some print outlets, Jake. We cannot have people in positions of keeping us all safe and knowing classified information or intelligence information. We can't have them leaking to the media. And there I don't fault the media. You're just trying to get information and do your jobs to report, you know, report it, break news, hashtag breaking news, of course. But at the same time, when asked on Friday, the White House dodged the question whether the administration was the source of the leaks to NBC News. We can't mm. have this. That should really infuriate Americans today, that people who possess this information are sending it to the media ahead of the president-elect receiving the information, the vice president-elect, and perhaps even the president himself, depending on the sequence of events. I want to ask you uh, about Obamacare, because that's going to be a big subject of debate when Congress is sworn in. Uh, there's a debate among Republicans, as you know, about how to repeal Obamacare. Is it better to repeal and then work on a replacement or repeal and immediately replace? On Friday, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky tweeted this. Take a look. 
I just spoke to real Donald Trump, and he fully supports my plan to replace Obamacare the same day we repeal it. The time to act is now, unquote. Can you confirm that President-elect Trump is committed to replacing Obamacare the same day uh, that it will be repealed? I can confirm that he is committed to replacing Obamacare with something that actually is affordable and accessible and allows you to buy health insurance over state lines. Yeah, but the same day or in three to have years? Savings accounts. Well, it really depends what what the piece of legislation is. What does it look like? What he is discussing with his team, including Vice President-elect Pence, the Republicans in Congress, um, and his incoming HHS Secretary, Congressman Tom Price, it are the possibilities of how to improve upon a system that most Americans think is still not working, is seen by many Americans as a failure, uh, is seen by many Americans as having in premiums increase, in some places 50 to over 100 percent, of having fewer choices, less access, lower quality. All of that has to change. We hear from Americans every single day on this, Jake. It is, it is one of the most prominently discussed issues when we receive, uh, we've received over 200,000 mm -hmm. comments, for example, on, you know, advice to the president-elect and the vice president-elect. But look, he's very committed to repealing and replacing it. He's been, Mr. Trump has been very upfront about what some of those particulars are. And we also know that you have popular provisions like coverage for pre-existing okay. conditions. But, we but, also know there are Americans relying upon it now. But no commitment on, on timing on the replacement. Kellyanne Conway, happy cool. new year. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Best of luck to you in the Thank new administration. You. Hope to see you soon. Goodness. See you in Washington, Jake. Thank you.